more starter motor woes. I've had to take this clapper out again. Um, I have a couple of ball of the Bosch uh, mounted solenoid type off um, 2X or an XB and XC I had. They both tested very well so I've just given this one a little bit of a lick of paint. The only thing disconcerting about that is of course a wide all this and I can buy another clapper but if I've got the starter motors here I'm going to use them. So for now while I test it I'll just bypass that. If need be I'll Oh, I haven't made my mind up whether I remove this or get another clapper. So given that I've given that an aerosol overhaul, I'm just popping these speed nuts in. This, oh, scratching the paint. Uh, for the front guards. Now with this car, I'll get my little XW Bible out in a minute. I think I'm up to almost $20,000. Or just over $20,000. The scary part about all that is that it's going to cost about another nine to finish. Um, which is ridiculous for a Falcon 500, but if you get somebody to do the work for you, well, the paint would have been another 20 grand on top of that. This is why people do GT replicas and this sort of thing to get their money back, I think. But um, I'll tell you what, though, I don't want a GS or a GT replica. I'm going to be really, really happy with this because I reckon this it's going to be like a new car. You know, it's going to have everything I need in it and everything I've wanted in the XW, so I don't really care. Because at the end of the day, if you keep it and get 10 years use out of it, you've had a, that's a good cheap car. My SS cost me almost 50000 so... Hmm. I'm just sort of... I hate doing jobs twice, and I'm just sort of in the process of doing a mock loom. Not a bad idea with crimp terminals. I always take the, the crimp bit off and solder them on. Even these sorts of things where they go into the battery, I've, I've tinned it so it doesn't fray. And so... We'll go about putting the other starter in now. Well, here's a little Bosch with a, a makeshift loom on it. Convoluted tubing isn't period correct for an XW. It's like toot and come and walk around with an iPod, but it doesn't matter. It, it does a good job. Well, I've laboured under a misapprehension. I've cleaned up two of these Bosch starter motors. There's one here and there's one in the car still. They have enough grunt to turn the engine over with no plugs in, but then the moment you put plugs in, of course, they stall. This is the original clapper that I spent a whole lot of time on. And it's absolutely knackered. I've just, I've, I've had enough of it. Um, I've spent the better part of the day playing with starter motors and I've just ordered a new one. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take it apart and show you a couple of parts inside and how, how age can affect them or heat can affect them. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this stupid thing. I've spent ages on it. I'm just going to pull it apart quickly. They're very easy to pull apart. There's a gasket. Um, I just want to show you, there's a couple of do's and don'ts with these and um, I've made a mistake of doing this with some starters I've disassembled. There's the clapper mechanism that throws the the Bendix out and there's a little sort of switch under there which you can keep clean. I'm just going to take these off, I'll take the end cap off. I have no interest in using this so I can just bin it but um, some of the issues I'd had with it Oh, here come the dogs. Okay. We'll just take that off. We'll take this end piece off first. There's a little spring there that holds that down. I'm going to take this out too. That pin just comes out there and we can lift that whole mechanism up. There we go. Now the problem with these starters, if you ever take these out, there's four brushes that run against the commutator down here and they are held to get in. You've basically got your field windings up here and here's your armature. Now what happens is if any of these copper conductors in here um, short out together, what that means is the starter will still turn but it won't have to talk to run properly and, uh, and that happened. I've seen that a lot and of course uh, the Bosch ones that have the solenoid on them do give out from time to time and they will test all right on the bench but they haven't got the talk to to, um, to turn the motor over properly and I replaced a lot on XFs back in the 80s, the XF Falcons with the with the fact that they get too hot under the exhaust and of course the V8s are the same. So we've got to bin this, put a brand new one on, that all looks beautiful, the commutator's in good nick and everything but she's knackered. Now if you remember I lengthened the accelerator right up there um, in order to fit a cable through the hole where the choke cable came through. Now in lengthening that pedal, that's where it comes through up the top there, 
In lengthening that pedal, it's essentially shortened accelerated travel. So I'm going to try and gain that or get that back by lengthening a rod down here because um, I'm using the cable, not the um, not the proper rod. Now that should look familiar. That's a um, one of the uh, brackets for the brake lines, the non-genuine ones that came, and I've kept them, and I can use that by sort of trimming it and making it look a bit better, and adding a piece here. And this is where the purists are going to hate me because I should have done it one way, and I'm not. I'm doing it this way. So we'll attach that, and um, it should look alright. With things like that, that's just a bit of right L steel. Um, better to do fabrication work before you get your plating done, and you can sort of plate it, and it almost looks, you know, it'll look almost factory, but I haven't got that luxury now. I've sort of already been and done all that. And you can see here, that actually looks really good. I've knocked the top of it off. Don't forget, this is just a brake line clamp, um, and it's made out of good gauge steel. It looks like about 2 mil steel. That should do the trick. And it's, uh, we can adjust the sort of the throw on the cable, if you know what I mean. So I've made this out of the right arm, and I can kick that out. And so it sits in those two holes, almost there. It's a, it's a tiny bit out, so I can kick it in a bit just to keep that perfectly level and operating properly. But by the time it's finished, you'll scarcely notice it. It'll, it, should, it should look pretty good. And once again, when you're working at hole sizes, get one of these. They're only about 10 bucks online. This isn't even a high quality one. It's pretty rubbish, but it is accurate. And so we've got to put our little ball on for the cable and it's rather than sort of peering down a ruler you can sort of see straight away a five millimeter hole is going to do the job nicely. Um, once that hole's drilled and we've painted this, it was going to paint black, um, it only comes with a standard nut so a bit of Loctite on the end would be, uh, would be a good idea as well. Now it isn't so important when you're drilling small holes like this but not bad practice to always drill a pilot hole first before you put the bigger one through. Just because it's easier to control, uh, you can center punch it and use a bigger one, but certainly with the really large ones, the 10 mil drills and above, or even 6 mil and above, I always use a pilot hole. There's nothing worse than a big drill with squealing its head off trying to get through a bit of steel, and this way it keeps it cooler, and um, also... Um, it, it just makes it faster, neater, and preserves your drill bits as well. So there we go, and we should find that that will fit beautifully in there, which it does. Yeah, right, that looks better. There we go, we'll try this one, and we should get a bit more joy. Oh, it's going to fall. When you're fabricating bits and pieces, you can just use washers, like in the case of this, to set the height up to where you want it. Um, once you've established that, I've just turned this out of a scrap of aluminium, um, and that'll sort of sit there nicely, and it sort of gives it a better, a better look, if you know what I mean. The the um, you can buy aftermarket bits and pieces, and they're sort of great big aluminium things, and quite often the anodized red and all this sort of stuff. And they just don't look as sort of, just as much as factory, but as tidy. I think this sort of thing is inclined to look a lot tidier. So I've got to muck around a little bit more with it. That bracket there is looking pretty good. Um, just got to fine tune this sort of system here. It's just sort of sitting there for now. And we'll see how she goes. Well, four starter motors later, I've just bought a new one and I'm going to try that. You can see it there, it all looks nice and fresh. I'm just going to try this out. I'm getting sick of starter motor issues and I just want to put this stupid problem to bed. More engine parts. I painted these for my brother um, for his Mustang. Oh shit, I didn't scratch that, did I? Oh, that's all good. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Busy painting this um, aluminium cold air intake type air cleaner. But we're here to talk about linkages. Now these are pretty manky, but that is what $100 buys you. And they're very, very hard to get. You have to bear in mind that um, C4 and FMX ones are completely different. Um, and so are the six cylinder ones. So we've got a split pin that's sort of stuck in there. So, and I can't, I'm going to have to use a pin punch to knock it out, but all oh, that slack, that's no good. You can buy bush kits for these at about $100 or something, it's just ridiculous. I'd sooner spin my own. Normally you can just pull them out with side cutters. 
I'm using a, a pin punch in here to knock them out. I might be able to get the side cutters onto it from this side then and just pull it out. I can just cut them off with the Dremel to get rid of the linkage, but um, they're just rusty. There they are there. Just a couple of rusty bits there. Then I can sort of pull this off and so I'm going to have to make a bush for that. It's very slack. The plastic one that was there looks to have um, looks to be past it. So I'll, I'll turn a brass or an aluminium one on a lathe, and that'll give it a nice swivel, a nice smooth area to work with. Just give it a good clean up. And one of the problems we have with this lever is when it pulls, it pulls right up onto this angle here so the cable can't pull it. So I've had to put a little dog leg lever on there. Um, I've got two stainless, a stainless bolt through there um, with two nuts locked together with a bit of Loctite on them. And it's getting full throttle this way. So the next thing you've got to worry about is this kick down here. So this is all just temporary. Eventually I'm going to put a, a performer on, Edelbrock performer in a Holly 600. We can't take advantage of the camshaft in this engine with a two barrel on. But if you look here, I've just put a little bend here, just on that point there, on the kick down. If we look down there, it's still a tiny bit out. So that's got to be, that bottom bit's got to be modified as well. To put it on, just put a bit of job of grease there. Dogs are barking, I don't know what they're barking at. And um, a quarter inch washer. Get the thing in there. I'm doing this one hang, I've got a bloody camera. And then we're going to put in a little 5 16th e clip on. And so we can look down there, it's all connected. It's only just clearing the firewall. I put a little notch in it down there where that little mark is. Um, and bend the ends of it just a little bit. The only other thing I've done is I squashed it in the vise here just to clear this adjusting screw. There, so... Which is working well. As long as it clears the air filter, which it will, we're in business. Pretty manky looking battery, but I've wired in the alternator down there. Um, to use the original regulator. That's the original alternator the car came with. It's one of the few parts that's, um, that's in this car that came with the car was when I bought the car. So, with all that in, we should have a bit of success. And we'll turn the, we've got both lights there. Beauty. There we go. So, the alternator charge light and the oil pressure light's working. Um, the only one that's not showing up as true is the brake fail light, which um, I've got an idea for, well I think I've located another switch for it. So that's all looking good. Just a couple of these things on. I found them in a box just to make things a bit tidier. Give it a bit of clearance under there as well between that and the moving parts. Bunnings bought this eight pack of um, ground sheets, cheap ground sheets for painting, house painting, and I've joined two down the centre. So sort of, I've got the whole car now wrapped. So the beauty of that um, is so I can do you know bits and pieces of bodywork on the doors, and I can fit up the guards because it's very hard when we fit the guards up to because um, they're flimsy. If you know what I mean, it's very hard to keep them straight while we block them back. And we want to protect all our nice new suspension and engine from getting all that uh, nasty dust on it. And we're sort of doing it this way. We're keeping it nice and we can put the guard on. And sort of stab through it with some bolts just to hold it in there. And that way then we, we can make a mess then and it's not going to cover everything up. And it breaks, so it's very fine that stuff, so it does break quite easily. But at least then we've got a stable platform, we'll tighten those up and secure it at the bottom. 
we've got a stable platform for it to um, to do some work. So you can see the car's tentatively got its face back on. I've put the guards over the uh, the all this plastic. It's all curtained off now, and that way I can sort of do body work and and all I need to do, um, and as well as the doors. I'm doing the doors as well. Um, this way, of course, once I'm finished, I can just sort of cut the plastic off and let it fall to the side, wheel the car out and sort of clean everything off. But um, it's still going to get dust in and around it, but it, it'll, it'll cut it down significantly. And, you know, this is, what, three ground sheets, and I think they're about a dollar each. So it's a cheap way of sort of, of doing it all. <clears throat> now I need a help. I need a hand getting it off so I don't get dust everywhere. I'm going to take these sheets off now and just hope the car doesn't get full of dust. Got some tentative work done on the doors, um, <coughs> almost done, almost ready. They've just got to be blocked back and little bits and pieces fixed on them. And I've just got dust and grab absolutely everywhere. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, guards, bit of work as well. They're ripply as hell, these things, but um, they're all no rust. So I've just got to get that all sort of sorted as well. So we're going to take this sheet off now. Slowly lift it up onto the roof. Hello. Stop there. And just walk slowly. Yeah, what's this? Yeah. Just, I'm just breaking away. Just pull it off. Pull it off. Yeah. It's just that I want to entrap some of that dust and just, just let it settle like that. Now I can just sort of fold it up and stick it in the bin. It's a lot of rooting around, I suppose, but it just means that there's no dust anywhere. You know, we take all this off and it's as good as gold. So, it's a bit of stuffing around putting those sheets on, but I'll, um, I'll put them on again when I sort of spray paint some of this stuff here. But that looks pretty cool. I've time to put the tail lights in, I've got a dunny budgie around. I've got to, um, there are three gaskets, some kits come with uh, only two. We've got one for the lens, uh, which we don't use at the moment. There's one that goes around the body, around here, and then there's this big one that sort of goes around the whole housing. I've got some spray contact adhesive, and I've just gone around in that ridge. I haven't, I, no. And I'll just spray around this as well. And that'll just hold it in place. Um, I just haven't got, I had a, I had some um, stuff I could put on with a cotton bud, particularly when there, it might be a bit tidier. But anyway, we've got to stick these two gaskets on and then we'll put the housing in. One advantage with XW, I don't know if XYs do it, is you can pick the best side. I've painted in here with an argent silver type thing, but they are very badly pitted in some spots. Should get some new ones, but of course I'm on a budget. Um, so I've sort of cleaned up and painted inside there. Um, and they'll be right to use. Um, these are the sorts of things, look a bit manky in there, but these are the sorts of details that can be changed later when we've uh, got a few better finances. But for now, I think they'll be fine. And these sorts of bits, just put a bit of cardboard in there and just go around that outer part there. Put that centre bit on, that way we don't get overspray in the boot. You only get one crack at contact with these. I'll we'll hold it there until I get the, um, and the tail light will hold there once it's in. There we go. And we can just tuck these in. And you can use a bone to just sort of run them in to get them nice and even. They have to be sitting, there's a little bit of a lip there, and they have to be sitting behind there. You don't want to see them, but you want them to seal. All right, then we can just sort of stick it in, and it'll compress that seal and seal nicely. these new screws, I didn't need to get these. I thought they were the lens screws, they were the body screws, and there was nothing wrong with the old ones. So we'll just start that one. And just pull them down evenly, just so that seal sits in nicely against the car and doesn't let any water in. Oh, the tail lights are working now. It's just the, um, just the tail light part of it. The indicator um, receptacle looked new, but it was a bit slack with the glow, but it wasn't making good contact. So I've just got a soldering iron just added a bit to the bottom of it there um, and in doing that we've got a nice firm connection. 
Now, if you're a fan of wheel dealers, you'll quite often hear Ed China complaining that pattern parts never fit, and he's quite right. And these are lovely, shiny new tail lights, and the problem with them is, and you can see here, they're actually bent out, they're bowed out on the edges, which means fitting them in the housings, particularly ours which have been freshly painted, they're all going to scratch and probably don't seal that well. So we need to heat these up with a heat gun very, very carefully and push them against the bench to straighten out those rails. I just don't want to damage the actual light there. Let me push it down like that. That's pretty warm, so but just let that that should sort of harden off against the coolness of the bench. Um, and that way it should just slide and I've got to keep that seal that straight because it sort of runs against the seal in the in the taillight housing. Tighten these and they crash, but there we go, that looks pretty good. Once the first bit of the back done, I put the taillights in. Looks good, I can't get the other indicator on because it hasn't got hazard flashes, but it works anyway. Uh, oddly enough, this one here, I hit it with the heat gun and the actual rails just, with that being pushed on the bench, just started truing up by themselves. That's the first of the back. I've been concentrating out the front, but we've now got to start working around the back. So I've thrown a bit of carpet down on these saw horses, um, or trestles if you like. That way it's, it's nice and soft for the door to sit on and we won't damage any of the finishing we've done. We've still got to go over this and give it another couple of coats of, uh, of high fill, just to get it dead level if we can. And also just clean up inside, and this is off a different car, this one, so we've got to clean them up inside and just make them um, ready to put on the car. Well I'm ready to start painting the doors, I've just got to put this saddle colour down first. Now, in this car, normally in a Falcon 500, this is visible, but the door trims that I've bought are Fairmont slash GT type, and there's a chrome trim that runs up at the, at the top edge there, and the door trim sort of folds over, so I don't see any of that. All you see is a little bit around here, um, perhaps a little bit on the, on the edge there, and this bottom kick plate, because the door trim only comes down to there, so I'm ready to start doing that. I'm only going to use a touch-up gun, and the worst part about this touch-up gun is I've actually lost the plastic um, we didn't lose it, it sort of broke apart and I had to throw it out and I didn't want to buy another gun um, so I've just taken this off the lounge room light switch and that'll just sort of plug in there, I can just put a bit of tape there and I can sort of fill it and it won't splash around too much but I haven't told wifey that I'll clean that with thinners, I've just used it for something else I'll clean it with thinners and stick it back Hopefully she doesn't notice. Well, I've done the saddle part of the um, of these doors. Uh, I've just got to uh, to mask up where that seal goes along that line there, and I'll do all the white. Um, I'll paint those and uh, stick them on the car. I'm going to have to colour sand them on the car because um, otherwise they're just going to have to kick around here too long. I like to leave them a good month after I've painted before I colour sand them, just to make sure it all goes off nice and hard before we buff it. Uh, and then we'll stick them on the car. So in the next video, we'll stick these doors on the car. Still having a lot of trouble getting the guards completely straight. They're being a nightmare. Um, the worst part about this car, of course, is it had hail damage on the roof, the bonnet, and the boot. But I haven't got that bonnet anymore. I've got a new one. Um, and, of course, it had been scraped along the side. So it's meant tapping out what I can and filling um, to get it perfectly straight. So in the next video, it should look a little bit more like a car. will have some doors on it. Um, hopefully some guards on it. And then once that's done, we can start sort of fitting out the front with the lights, um, you know, all that sort of stuff, the wiring, finishing off the wiring with the lights, putting the lights on, driving lights, that sort of stuff. And also um, fitting out the seals in here, quarter windows, all that sort of stuff. So uh, sorry it's taken so long. It's been going on. I think we're up to video 17 or something now. 
at the end of the day uh, it will it's a slow process but it'll turn out looking pretty good see you later